Hi, in the last class we seen about the introduction of colon targeted drug delivery system. So today we are going to see about the anatomy of colon targeted drug delivery system. According to anatomy of colon, the gastrointestinal tract divided into stomach and small intestine as well as large intestine. The large intestine extending from the ileocecal junction to the anus. Anus is divided into three main parts. One is colon, second is rectum, and third one is anal canal. For the purpose of colonic drug delivery, there are two important physiological factors to be considered. These are pH and gastrointestinal transit time. The middle and left colon have pH values of approximately is 6.6 and 7.0. The interspecies variability in pH is a major concern when developing and testing of colon specific delivery systems. Next we seen about the functions of the colon, the creation of suitable environment for the growth of colonic microorganism. Second one is absorption of potassium and water from the lumen concentrating the fecal contents, secretion and excretion of potassium and bicarbonate ions. Third one is through the muscular movements of colon, fecal matter is pushed along until finally the walls of the sigmoid colon contracts causing the fecuses to move into the rectum. According to anatomy of colon, the pH of gastrointestinal tract for oral cavity is 6.2 to 7.4. Esophagus pH is 5.0 to 6.0. The stomach fasted condition is 1.5 to 2.0. Fasted condition means is before food that is called as empty stomach. That fed condition it is after food 3.0 to 5.0. Next so for small intestine, small intestine jejunum pH is 5.0 to 6.5. Jejunum is also called as upper portion of small intestine. Ileum is also called as lower portion of small intestine. Ileum pH is 6.0 to 7.5. Large intestine is also called as colon. The right colon is pH is 6.4. Middle and left colon is 6.0 to 7.6. This is structure of colon. Colon contains mainly four parts, transverse colon, ascending colon, descending colon and sigmoid colon. The right side of the colon contains hepatic portal vein, superior mesenteric vein, inferior vena cava, right colic flexor, middle colic artery and vein, right colic artery and vein, fatty appendices, ileocecal valve, cecum, appendix and left side of the colon contain superior mesenteric artery, inferior mesenteric vein, left colic flexor, greater omentum, left colic vein, inferior mesenteric artery, acetra, left colic artery, sigmoid arteries and veins, tania coli, sigmoid flexor, the end part of the colon contains rectums. The rectums divided into two parts, one is appendix, second one is anal. The appendix contains internal parts is ileocecal valve, cecum and anal is anal columns, anal canal and external anal sphincter, internal anal sphincter and anus. The wall of the large intestine has four layers, the serosa, the muscularis, the submucosa, the mucosa, the outer serous layer if formed by visceral peritoneum, the rectum does not have a serous layer. Next, we are going to discuss about motility of colon. Three basic pattern movement, periodic uncoordinated to the contraction for segmentation of both the longitudinal and circular muscle punch up the fold of the mucosa forming the hostra. So, second one, phasic random non-propulsive. Third one, contractions peristalsis and retrograde peristalsis which mix the stool material and help absorb its liquid contents with advancing the material towards the anus. The spontaneous mass movement occurs three or four times a day when the colon becomes filled and distended. Valsalva maneuver, the involuntary movement of the bubble wall and the relaxation of the external sphincter are assisted by contraction of the diaphragm and the thoracic and abdominal muscles. Next, we are going to discuss about the secretion. Colonic secretion is scanty and consists primarily of water, mucus, potassium and bicarbonate. 
the alkaline mucus secreted by cobalt cells in the crypts duplicates the intestinal protects the mucosa from acidic bacterial action and helps lubricate the passage of stool next we are going to see about the absorption and elimination 1000 to 2000 ml of liquid comes enters the colon daily only 150 to 250 ml of fluid is evaporated in the stool the colon absorbs sodium chloride and water with the most absorption being accomplished in the ascending colon let's come to the end of the session i hope you are understand about the anatomy of colon and function of colon in the upcoming lecture series we are going to see about the criteria for drug selection of colon targeted drug delivery systems thank you